Exodus, the story of God and his people. And uh, right after God had given them the Ten Commandments, that's kind of where we were, and then he had some more uh, legal and moral codes that God gave to the people as a way of telling them, hey, this is how I want you to do life as the people of God. And after all those commandments, then God kind of starts a new section in Exodus chapter 23. And I want us to just look at that verse. I have that verse at the top of your outline. Uh, verse 20 of Exodus chapter 23. Here's what God told the people after he'd given them all those commandments. He said this, See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Now, that angel was uh, with them before. It might not be the same angel, but it, you know, it, it was a significant angel when God, whenever they left Egypt, there was an angel that led them in the pillar of cloud by night, in the pillar of uh, pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, and directed them as they were leaving Egypt. Now there's this angel that God says will guard them and will guide them and bring them to this final destination that God has prepared for them. And what is that place? That's the promised land, right? We're familiar with that. We've heard about that before. All the people had to do, they, they just had to continue to obey and live out their calling as the people of God. And if they do, um, you know, the angel will get them right where they need, where they needed to be. I read an article this week that talked about throughout the pandemic that there were people who, who have not had, never had the coronavirus, but yet they were reporting a host of seemingly unrelated symptoms. They were experiencing excruciating headaches, episodes of hair loss, uh, upset stomach for weeks on end, uh, sudden outbreak of shingles, um, flare-ups of autoimmune disorders. And these contrasting symptoms were appearing in otherwise healthy individuals. And it just kind of, the doctors couldn't figure out what's going on here in, in these people. And, you know, the people would leave, leave the doctors and they, they would go to a specialist to find out what was wrong. They still, um, they couldn't get any answers. But it turns out that a common thread in many of these, these conditions that were months in the making was nothing more than chronic stress brought on by eight months of dealing with the pandemic. Nationwide, surveys have found an increase in the rates of depression and anxiety and su suicidal thoughts. One doctor who deals with chronic stress said this, the mental health component of COVID is starting to come like a tsunami. Just when we hoped to put eight months behind us, and we start having thinking, you know, uh, maybe this virus has run its course and we can start opening things up now. We're starting to get more grim news uh, as we, you know, about COVID-19. We're, we're looking in Europe and now they are beginning to close, close down as they have surges in, in cases that are coming. We're starting to see that in the U.S. as we are getting more and more cases climbing another curve. ICUs are starting to fill up again in some states and we don't have a vaccine yet, and we're entering flu season, right? And so sadly, it looks like this COVID thing may be around more than just a few months. And this becomes a challenge for us then. How, how are we going to get through all of this? Not, not just, oh, you know, uh, you know, we can maybe handle, how, keep from getting the virus. But the other thing is, how are we going to deal with this continued isolation, uh, the continued su shutdowns, the continued of we can't get together and hug one another? I think about this grandparents and, and grandchildren. I heard a story yesterday where, where a grandson was, was, you know, I just want to hug you, Grandma, and, you know, and they, they held back on that. More masks and more Zoom meetings. And, and as we think ahead in next month, what Thanksgiving dinners are going to be different this year. Christmas dinners are going to be different this year. On his last night when he was together with the disciples, Jesus celebrated the Passover with them. And it was kind of like their Thanksgiving dinner. And that one was different 
for them than any, of, than any other that they had ever celebrated. And the disciples sensed in Jesus that there was something bad going on, that something was going to go down. There was this uneasiness in the air as Jesus talked a little bit more about his impending death, and they couldn't get their hand around that, you could get their head around that. Um, he, he was doing strange things like doing a foot washing at this meal, which is kind of out of the ordinary. He told Judas, uh, hey, go do what you need to do. And that just seems strange at the moment. But they did not really know what lies ahead here. I mean, we know, hey, the crucifixion is around the corner, but the disciples had no idea about that. It was just a very confusing time for them. And so Jesus knows this, and so he gives the disciples a sort of pep talk to, to continue on. And, and it takes up, this pep talk take, takes up four chapters in the book of John. It was important enough, what Jesus said, that John wanted to get every word and include it in his biography about Jesus, wanted people to know. And we get to listen in as we read Jesus' encouragement to the disciples on how to get through the tough days that are going to lie ahead. So let's look at what Jesus says in John chapter 14. Here's how he starts out. John 14, verse 1, he says this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Now, does that sound interesting? Does that sound familiar there? Go back to Exodus chapter 23, right? What does, the, what does God say? Hey, there's an angel that is going ahead of you to a place that I has prepared for you. I wonder if Jesus is telling the disciples this on purpose because they know their scripture. They know their scriptures. I wonder if Jesus is saying, hey, he's kind of telling them, think about, think about back then. Don't be afraid. There's tough times ahead, but soon enough, you'll be coming to your own promised land that I've got planned for you. And so Jesus is saying, hey, just like the angels went ahead for the, for, um, for the disciples' ancestors, I'm going ahead of you to get things ready. And so he gives them instructions over the next four chapters about how to survive this difficult time in their lives. Now, this, if you have an opportunity this week, if I can give you guys some homework, this is what I would give you, is to go home and read, those, starting in John 14, read the next four, four chapters that Jesus has for them. It is excellent, uh, just a good time of, of comforting that Jesus gives them. And so let's go down to verse 16 of John 14. Here's what he says. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And so just like God sent the angel to make sure the Hebrew people got to where they were going, Jesus said, hey, God is going to do the same thing for the disciples and for us, right? He's going to send someone to be with us during these times that we're going through. And then he continues, verse 17, second part of verse 17, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now go down to verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, so as we're dealing with this prolonged pandemic that we find ourselves in, I think that God gives us four gifts that will help us to go through this time and help us just to deal with this whole COVID thing that we are going through. And I think the first gift that he gives us is this. He gives us his guidance. He gives us the promise to guide us. God sent an angel to guide the Hebrew people. We, we read in Exodus 23, God sends the Holy Spirit to guide us when he says, and, and, and this is part of the speech that Jesus gives his disciples in John 16, 13. He said this, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Now, 
we know that the world that we live in today, there are lots of versions of truth out there, right? Um, you may tell somebody that, you know, a, a, the truth, and they'll say, well, that's true for you. That's just the society that we live in today. But isn't it comforting to know that God, through the Holy Spirit, will guide us into all truth? That think about what he's saying there. That's a comforting statement. Now, don't confuse this, because there's a lot of Christians will believe, well, just because I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm a Christian, anything I think and then anything I believe is, is the truth, okay? That's, I mean, we can be duped as well, okay? So that's not, that's not true. But when we read Scripture, when we meditate on God's Word and let it just percolate inside of us, when we come into this place and when we genuinely worship God and, and, and get filled with His Spirit, when we fellowship or, or just communicate nowadays with other Christians and pray for one another and, and talk with one another, the truth of God becomes apparent in our lives as He will guide us through all of those things. That's essential. I was a uh, this week I was backing my car out of the driveway, and it was in the pre-dawn hours. And it was that on that morning when um, it was very misty, very foggy. Uh, you know, you get in the car in the morning, and there's dew over everything. And so, uh, you know, you got to roll the window down and clean the dew off of your side mirror. And so you get to do all those things backing out of my driveway. Now, here's the thing about backing out of my driveway. My son parks right behind me, kind of down at the end of the driveway. And so, you know, I can't just go, <laughs> you know, I've got to what? You know, I've got to swing around sort of thing. Well, that morning it was a challenge, you know, with all that stuff going on. And so I got to do one of these things. You roll the window down and you're kind of like, you're, you, know, you, you can't use the mirrors real well yet. You're kind of looking out the back, you know, am I clear? Now, he, here's the deal. Um, Newer cars now today, now nowadays they have so many cool features. Now, when I buy, I I don't know this personally because I buy my cars f like five years <laughs> uh, old, you know. And, and but new new cars have the backup camera that you can see out the back. I see that guy; he's a monster, isn't he? You have a seat, fella. <laughs> but but newer cars have the backup camera. Um, that you can see they also have radar detectors all along them to to make sure that you you know you're not going to get too close to something to kind of kind of alert you to something's going on um, cars and I think this is really cool we've seen commercials that cars will parallel park themselves how awesome is that <laughs> right <laughs> kids who are 16 don't be don't need to be nervous about doing that anymore like we used to but I mean, I just they're just loaded with technology to help us and guide us in situations like that in driving. And I think Jesus is telling the disciples and us the same thing. That Listen, the time that you're going through, this COVID is kind of like backing up in the fog. And so what Jesus is saying, listen, um, you are loaded, though, with the technology of the Holy Spirit who will guide you as you go through this crazy, crazy time. God will guide us through. We don't have to be scared. We don't have to be afraid that when we turn to God, he will guide us. That's the first gift. The second gift that he gives us is this. He will guard us and give us a new way of seeing things. He will guard us and give us a new way of seeing things. One of the things that God told the Hebrew people in Exodus 23, the attending angel will guard you along the way. Jesus said the same thing in John 14, 16 I read earlier. He said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to help you and be with you forever. Then he continues, you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, Jesus said. I will come to you. Now, we may ask or you may ask, listen, wait a minute. If the Holy Spirit is in me, why does bad stuff still happen to us? Why do good Christians still get cancer? Why do doctors and nurses who are working 16-hour days to, to fight you know, people that are getting COVID, why do they end up dying of the same thing? How is God 
guiding us during this pandemic. Heard a story about a three-year-old boy that was staying overnight at his grandmother's, and when it became time for bed, the, the little boy gave some instructions for grandma, and he says, you know, leave the night light on in the hallway and keep my door open a little bit so th the light shines in. And the grandma was like, but, you know, I know at home you're not scared of the dark. You know, why, why do you want all those things? The boy said, yeah, but that dark at home is my dark, all right? And you think about that, that's the protection, that's the guarding that the Holy Spirit provides for us, that he makes the dark that we experience it. He makes it our dark because he's in there with us. In fact, that's a commitment that God made to the Hebrew people and that Jesus makes to us that he is not going to let anything, anything come between us. If you recall what Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter 8, he wrote this to the church in, in Rome that was being persecuted. And he said this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we're not protected in the sense of being safe from anything that's going to happen out there. We are guarded by the Holy Spirit in a way that the Holy Spirit opens up our eyes that we are able to see, to see the situation that we are in from God's point of view. And when we see things from God's point of view, it's a whole different perspective and all of a sudden, we realize that things are going to work out okay. In fact, the Apostle Paul said this, if God is for us, who can be against us? What a, what a, what a thought. And when we fully come to that sort of thinking, when we understand that, man, that keeps us faithful to God till the end. Here's the third gift I think God gives us, is that he gives us courage during challenging times. It gives us courage during challenging times. John 16, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Jesus told the disciples this. This is part of the pep talk that he told them. These things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. One of my favorite memories with my father is uh, when he was an usher at the arena in the town where we're, uh, nearby where we grew up. And he would often uh, take me to the events that happened there, be hockey games, basketball games, studio wrestling. Now, studio wrestling back in the 70s is what it was the early stages of WWF today or WWE, whatever you call it today. And, man, I used to love when, when they came to town and Dad would take me to see all those. And, and it was as ridiculous then as it, was, it, as it is today. Um, but I, I can remember one of the f favorite things I used to see is when they would have a tag team match. Okay? Tom, you remember tag team wrestling? Okay? And so that's when you had, you had two guys on each, on each team. And... Uh, you know, one from each team would come out and do the normal wrestling. And then you'd have your partner that would be back in the corner holding on to this rope. They had to hold on to a rope. And what happened, you'd be wrestling, and if you got, you know, a guy got you all tied up or you got really tired, what you'd do is you'd make your way over to your partner and you'd tag your partner and your partner could come in because he'd be a little fresh and, you know, give you a rest. And then your partner would take over and it would go on like that. Just, it was absurd. <laughs> but... But that's, you know, that, 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 was, that was tag team. And I think, I think the Holy Spirit is our tag team partner in life. That when we're wrestling, without whatever situation that we're going through in life, our tag team partner is in our corner, and he's yelling at us words of encouragement, words of hope, words of wisdom of what we can do next to get through this situation. And then when it gets too overwhelming, we, we, when we need that extra strength, we need that extra encouragement in life, we tag the Holy Spirit, and he gives us, from the interior, he gives us that strength and that encouragement and that courage when we need it. 
He provides it. 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul told Timothy this. There's a, a young pastor. Um, here's, here's, and I get this. Paul tells Timothy this. For God has not given us a spirit of timi- fear and timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. That's that Holy Spirit. And so we act wisely when we respond to this pandemic. You know, according to what the doctors are telling us to do, we do it, but we don't back down. We don't cower in fear because God has given us the Holy Spirit to give us power to continue on, to give us courage to do what we need to do, to hang in there when we feel like giving up, when we can't handle it anymore. Um, Power to love, power for self-discipline. When we get in that rut and we just don't, you know, why? I don't feel like it anymore. We call on the Holy Spirit to give us encouragement to continue on in our faith as the people of God. The third gift is that he gives us courage during challenging times. And then the fourth one is this. God grants us peace during turbulent times. He grants us peace during turbulent times. John 14, 27, I read this earlier. He says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Man, I think this is one of the most important verses for these times. Because we just seem to be living in this time of fear. Um, The pandemic threatens people's lives. And, and there's a lot of people threatened with the possibility of death, which is very real, yes. People are threatened with the possibility of losing their job or losing their income. And so what's next? People, I mean, we've already dealt with losing our freedom. And, and that's driving us crazy. And, you know, so how do we deal with that? We, we're in the middle of an election cycle where both sides are pandering to fear, right? The, you know, if you don't vote for my guy, this is going to happen to you. Both sides are just, oh, that fear is so palpable. And in the midst of all that, you know what? Jesus is standing back and just saying, no, no. You know, if you get a vaccine, that is not going to bring you peace in life. Your person as president is not going to bring peace, true peace in your life. Having more money in your life. That is not going to bring peace in your life. Those are all the things that the world offers, is it not? And Jesus says, I don't give to you as the world gives. He says, the peace that I'm offering you, you can't get anywhere else. It is a gift from me. I heard a story about two artists that were commissioned to paint pictures that expressed peace, peaceful situations. And the first artist pick, painted this very serene environment, this, uh, this mountain lake that was calm and quiet and very tranquil, and that, um, th- that pictured uh, these perfect reflection on this lake, reflecting the green hills on, on, the, on the other side with these tall pine trees and so on. I mean, when you think of a picture, a location of perfect peace, I mean, this person painted it. That was it. But then the second artist had a very different approach. It was a turbulent scene with a violent waterfall that was just crashing down on these jagged rocks that were sticking up out of the water. And you just had to picture if you were there, it'd be really noisy. But the the artist added something, that alongside the waterfall was this slender birch tree that that had some uh, very fragile branches that were reaching out over the waterfall and, and um, you know, just over the foam of the waterfall just coming crashing down. And on one of those branches was a bird. One of those flimsy branches was, was a bird. And it was painted in such a way that you can tell that this branch, that with all the, the foaming going on of the waterfall, that branch was just kind of swaying up and down and up and down. This bird was perched on it. Now, the bird was not oblivious to the fragile nature of the branch. It knew that that branch could break at any time. It also knew that if that branch broke, he had wings. And he could fly away. That's the picture of the inner peace that God gives us. 
knowing that even in these turbulent times, we have options. Jesus told his disciples, John 16, 1, he told them this. All these things I've told you, I'm giving you this pep talk so that you will not fall away from the way. The bottom line here is that God gives us these incredible gifts so that we will be faithful. Just so we will be faithful. He doesn't want us turning away from him. He doesn't want us getting upset and, and, and worrying and, and turning away from him. So as we labor on, as we labor on in this pandemic, let's remember that God has some incredible gifts for us to keep us faithful and get us through these times. Man, if you're a follower of Jesus, I invite you to just use this as an opportunity to renew your commitment, to renew your faith in him, to claim these gifts. If you're watching at home, same sort of thing. If you're, if you're a follower of Jesus, Claim these gifts and, and be aware. Maybe this week, go home and read those couple chapters in John and just say, man, this, is, this applies to, to me, that God saved this for me to get through this time. And so maybe we renew our desire to serve him. We, we call upon the Holy Spirit to say, man, I don't feel like it today, but I'm going to tag the Holy Spirit and through this day. Or this is just wearing me out. God, I need you. We tag the Holy Spirit to just give me some strength to get through today. If you're not a follower of Jesus, and you're just kind of curious, you're just kind of checking him out during this time, keep checking him out. Because God knows you, God loves you, God wants a relationship with you. And so I would encourage you to just keep checking him out. Read more from about Jesus in the book of John and it just comes down to where you just tell God, I'm ready to follow Jesus. And you just confess that I'm tired of living life on my own. God, I need peace. God, I need, I need an abundant life that, that he talks about. And so, man, if you're, just, if you're just checking out Jesus for the first time, he is open to that. And so I invite you to do that as well. I'm going to give us some time of silence as we close here. And I trust that, uh, let me put it this way. I know God has been speaking because God always speaks to us. And so I want you to just, in this time of si silence, just think about, God, what are you saying to me? God, what are you saying to me? And then the follow-up is this. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? So let's just have a time of silence, time of silent prayer. God, we live in this um, sometimes crazy, messed up, sinful world, and then you throw things like COVID in there, and uh, it is often a struggle. But as we read over and over again in the Bible, the story is that you are continually reaching out to your people, to your creation, and you are calling us to yourself. And so, Lord, in the midst of COVID, how beautiful it is that we are reminded that you give us gifts to get along in this world, not to buy, but to thrive. God, that you promise to guide us and guard us. And you promise to give us courage and bless us with peace. And so, Lord, for many of us, we know these things. We've heard these things a million times. And so, Lord, the challenge is putting them into practice. And so, Lord, we pray. We pray that you might break through to us. And that, because when it's all said and done, that is what we just want to be faithful. Yes. And so give us, help our unbelief. 
bring to mind those areas that we need to shore up as we go through these times, these challenging times of COVID. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. The one who goes ahead of us. Amen. We're going to sing a song called Where He Leads Me. The words will be on the screen. And uh, let's, let's sing. Let's